About 40 minutes out of Prague is like a beautiful city with more than a thousand year old history of winemaking called Mjelnik and that's the city I'm going to show you today. So now we finally arrived to the Mielnik's main bus station and in front of us is walk up the hill to get to the castle. This medieval tower right behind me opens up the historical heart of Mielnik. So let's take a look inside. And now welcome on a Mielnik's main square. Even though it's a relatively small city, this main square they have here is pretty large and packed with uh, some historical buildings that I'm going to show you in a little while. But first, let's take a look to Mielnik's Chateau, which is just right there. <music> So here we are on the main courtyard of Mielnik Chateau. Now there are a couple of things you should know about Mielnik Chateau. So first of all, Mielnik was a royal dowry town of Czech queens and they used that for centuries. So uh, they were very often staying on this former castle, nowadays a chateau. Um, what is interesting is that this chateau is still in the hands of one famous noble families that uh, lived in our country and originated in our country in 16th century called Lopkovits. Uh, they live on the first floor and they opened up second floor for the tourists so they can take a look at some of their uh, amazing collections, especially collections of some Baroque interior, uh, some amazing Baroque paintings and also some medieval armor, medieval maps and lots of other things. So uh, I think you will definitely definitely enjoy uh, the exposition they have just right there in the second floor. Uh, another important part are of course the wine cellars that are located underneath this courtyard. Now if we'd be talking about the wine cellars, um, the oldest part is from the reign of Charles IV, so um, the second half of 14th century. Um, as the time went by, the cellars were a little bit of an expanded. Uh, the biggest part of the cellars is actually pretty modern because it's from 20th century, uh, when they basically added enormous amount of uh, modern space, but still with respect to the historical heritage of this chateau. So um, we cannot record in uh, the uh, in the museum in the second floor, but we're going to show you uh, the beautiful wine cellars under this chateau. So. Let's take a look on them. One of the most fascinating parts about Mjelnik Chateau are the wine cellars. Uh, the oldest part was founded by Charles IV, so a couple hundred years ago. And uh, they were used to store the wine produced in the nearby region. So let's just take a quick tour through their cellars. Now part of the wine cellar that I love the most so far is this huge hall filled up with those gigantic barrels for wine. And now uh, this hall reminds us about one interesting tradition that Lopkovic family had. Whenever a new son was born, they created one of those huge barrels and they were waiting till his 18th birthday. Now a year before that, they filled up the barrel with wine and they were waiting for his 18th birthday. So when he reached 18th, they opened up this barrel and drunk the entire barrel as a part of his celebration. Now I reached the last room in the wine cellars under Mjelnik Chateau and I have to say I'm very impressed by its size. It just, it's just huge. 
So uh, I can only hardly imagine how much wine they were storing inside of here um, centuries and centuries ago. So I hope you enjoyed this quick tour through the wine cellars and let's take a look at some other sites uh, here nearby the Mjelnik Chateau. <music> One building which simply cannot be overlooked is St. Peter and St. Paul's Church, which you can see right behind me. Uh, now what made this church so outstanding is its super tall tower that is visible many, many kilometers outside of Mjelnik. Uh, the current church is a Gothic church from the 15th century, even though an older Romanesque basilica was already standing here in 11th century. What made this church famous is its ossuary, which is hidden under the main altar. And those are the little windows that you can see down there. It's the second largest ossuary in the Czech Republic and you can find their bones from about 10,000 human bodies. And uh, I think it's uh, creepy but also very, very interesting. So that was my Mjelnik adventure. Now, if you're in Prague and you have a couple spare days and you're thinking about some of the day trips, I think Mjelnik is a city you should put on your list as well, especially if you're a wine lover. So for those of you who decide to go, I'm going to see you on our Mjelnik day tour.